Welcome, partner, back to the west of Lothan. In the last part, we did a little uh, time traveling and got some new fancy doohickeys that I'm probably not going to use because I got better equipment. Um, okay, I got my eyes fixed. Uh, follow the tracks. You hop onto Brandy's back and ride like the wind following the railroad tracks back into the desert. When you finally catch up, you stand on Brandy's saddle and leap into the back of the train. A real badass, just barely catching the edge of the roof and pulling yourself up. Here's hoping that you don't have to do that again. Your stuntman could have been killed. Looks like Susie decided not to join you on the cow not having a stuntman, so you're on your own until you get back to Frisco. Whew. Hey, you creepy sum gun. Hey, get back here. Oh, good, somebody built this rickety ass bridge between cars. Ooh, mind the gap. Okay, well, I'm gonna go down here and see what's in here. Yep, save track of five. Huh. <laughs> Plot brand. Ooh, these guys look angry. They are weak. Well, looks like I'm going back up. Come here, you some gun. Oh! Norman flying off the side of the train. No way you can make a dramatic recovery from that event. You should head up to the cabin see if you can find some way to steer this thing back to Frisco. I've hidden the key forward passing the car in my luggage to make it easier for me to murder everyone in the second car instead of the train murderer. Come to the roof of the sleeping car in the next 55 minutes if you want to murder it. Check inside. Hello oh, sir, is there any, is something wrong? I need to worry about kid I'm on the trail of a bad guy. Oh, do you mean the murderer, sir? I'm pretty sure that's the one on the train. You don't call me the world's greatest detective for nothing. What's your name, kid? I probably should have, shouldn't say that, sir. It might be a copyright thing. Okay, well, I'm pretty sure I can handle this. Just let me ask you one question, then you should lock your door after I'm gone. Sure, sure, what would it be? Are you on the roof of the train? Excuse me? Remember, the murderer left a note saying he's on the roof of the train, alright? Are you? Uh, no, sir. This, I'm the passenger. Good, right, good. That'll be all. Uh, excuse me, Ma. Some, someone might be an assistant, Monsieur. Sorry to bother you. There's murder on the loose, and I'm checking the passenger compartment. Check it up, boo. This is very serious, one of me. I'm me to prefer to do every cells. I don't know what you mean. I certainly. I. I'm on the roof of the train. Roof of the train, right now. That's right. I'm having a conversation with you. Uh. Since the no from the murderer says he's gonna be on the roof of the train, he couldn't be in the train. So I'm gonna be the pressure for it. And on the roof, which means the person must be the murderer. The only clue is a legend ticket, though, that has number three on it. Hmm. Can I look at that again? I was gonna say the same thing. Check inside. Oh, hello. Is there something you need, dear? Sorry to bother you, ma'am. I don't want to alarm you, but there's murder on the train. I'm missing. Murder on the train. Go ahead. I finally made it to the passenger car, one car back in the middle Suddenly, Norton clambers in the window. He must have dramatically clung to the side of the train in order to reveal the last minute that he had been, at, and been defeated. Dang it. He runs into the, uh, the frontmost car of the train, locks the door. What a jerk. Maybe you can get some of the passengers to help break down the door and arrest him, or maybe just kick down the door and shoot him. Maybe you bother him, right? Eh, it's up to you. Excuse me, can you help me something? Sorry, I'm busy. 
Asked my wife and my daughter. God knows she couldn't do something to help her. Keep occupied. What are you working on? It's quite academic, I'm sure. <laughs> Try me. You must know I'm a scholar of foreign antiques and I am attempting to install an ancient conundrum for the Far East. That's a Sudoku. My little brother thinks they're for babies. What? Look, this box can't be a three or a seven because you've got those there and there. So it has to be a four, which means it, it's five here and nine here. And if it's nine, if that's a nine, then it can't be. A, then this can't be. It's so it's a seven and a two. Well, damn it! That was fun. What fun is it if you just solve it for me? Sorry, will you help me break down the door to the engine room and arrest the Emperor? Well, I guess I got nothing better to do. Hey, buddy. It's all a lie. We're never gonna get to Frisco. Frisco probably doesn't even exist. We've probably been testing to see how long we can survive in a couple of Mary peanuts and bottled water, and now they're driving us into the desert to some kind of government camp. They're gonna use our guns and do alien flying machines. What? Oh, sorry, I guess I got lost there for a second. Feel better? Well, yes and no. Listen, we're going to get to Frisco, but first, you gotta bust into the locomotive up front and arrest the crazy guy. I need some volunteers. Okay, I'm in, but if I sit here doing nothing, I'm gonna flip about again. Uh, excuse me? Yes, uh, crazy jerk calling himself Emperor Norton has hijacked the train. I need volunteers to help burst down the door and arrest him. I see, and? And will you help me? Uh, no, rather not. That's quite strange, it's perhaps even dangerous. Come on, please. No, I don't think so. I'm quite comfortable here and I prefer to avoid stress. Pretty please. Again, no. Pretty please with sugar. Gravy? Come on. Come on. Ah, ah. Uh, before I try that, except that there was a murder on top of the passenger car, so let me put the ladder and see about. Ah, there's the train murder as advertised. Fight. There we go. <laughs> and this first lunch tag turns out the tag is number three. Okay. Just wanted to get that out of the way. Excuse me, ma'am. Uh, whatever it is, I want no part of it. I keep to myself. I've got no desire to get involved. Thank you very much. Come on, it, this is important. A crazy guy stole the train. I need help arresting him, or you'll never get to Frisco. I'm sure everything will sort us out in the end, and in the meantime, I have plenty of wool. You pick up the far end of her scarf and pull on the trail, trailing end of the yarn three or four rows. Hey now, what do you think you're doing? Lady, you're gonna help me arrest the, that nut in the driver's compartment, or we're gonna find out the answer of the age-old question, how long is a piece of string? Alright, alright. <laughs> Anything to get off this train away from you faster. Alright, good. Okay. Hi there, busy? No, all my toys and friends are in luggage and it's boring and I hate it. You want me to help out with something really important? Huh, like what? Well, a bad guy took over the engine car and they need some people to help help me break it down the door and arrest him. What, mister? I'm just a little girl. Hey, now that's not a good attitude. Don't ever let anybody tell you you can't do anything just because you're a girl. I gotta burp. <coughs> Sorry. Excuse me? But, hmm. Okay, yeah. We'll bust... We'll bust that crook's face in. Ah, that's the spirit. But you gotta pay me in advance. Okay, jeez, you're learning a little too fast. Alright, what do you want? Uh, I like stuffed animals. Excuse me, ma'am. Yes? A great psycho has taken over the train's engine car, and I need volunteers to help break down the door and arrest him. Oh my, I certainly couldn't be of help with that. I'm very conflict adverse. Huh, what if I told you he hates birds and he demands to outlaw them from the territory after he sees his power? That's very sly, but I know you're only saying that because you saw the book I was reading. Yeah, you got me there. Any other ideas to convince me? Suddenly, you hear a tapping. You hear a tapping. A tapping at the passenger car window. What the? Russell? You open the window and pet your crow Russell. Your pet crow Russell flaps in and perches on your shoulder. Hey, buddy, good to see ya. Caw. Oh my gosh, what a beautiful crow! And he knows you? Oh sure, me and Russell go way back, right buddy? Caw! I rescued him from a cat when he was just out of the nest and raised him as a pet. I set him free when I left home recently. But what is he doing here? Has he been following you since then? No, he's probably just been flying around and spotted me on the roof of the train and recognized me. 
That was really smart like that. That's amazing. Oh, what I wouldn't give to have an avian friend like that. Well, I'm still going to be doing a lot of traveling after this, so I, fi I figure so. I can't really drag Russell along with me, but I best Ru Russell wouldn't mind being pals with a really nice lady in Frisco who helped me save the train. What do you think, Russell? Russell calls again, flaps over to perch next to the lady. He lightly pecks at her shoulder in a friendly manner. Caw! Oh my goodness. How could I refuse? It's a pleasure to meet you, Russell. My name's Annabelle. Awesome. I'll let you know when we're ready. Confront Norton. Ah, okay. You pound on the door of the locomotive or engine car or cab or whatever. Open up, Norton. No, alright. I'm coming in then. Yeah, you and one army, tough guy. I mean, this army. You and the passengers break down the door impressively. That would have been better if you had some torches and old fashioned rigs. Norton then backs up into the corridor of the engine, engineer's compartment next to the engineer who looks over his shoulder and shrugs. So called Emperor Norton, you're under arrest for the crimes of being a total ass. That's not illegal. It, it is when I'm in town. Everybody grab him, except you, Mr. Engineer. I can bear I can see you're busy driving the train. Right. Actually, if you could turn around and head back to Frisco uh, at the next station, that'd be great. No problem. Ugh, let me go. This isn't over. You haven't heard from the last of me. Tell that to the judge, Norton. The prison judge. You did it. Thanks, boss. No problem. We got the track laid right up to the station now. The first ever cross-territory railroad, thanks to the Manifest Destiny... Railroad Company, and principally you. You did a real great job, Limp McCain. Aw, oh, shucks. Don't mention it. Ah, uh, we did it. Now playing the final cutscene. Looks like somebody on the train did a good... got a job as the projectionist. Would you like to watch the movie? It's free because movies have only been recently invented and no one has figured out how to they can charge them from yet. Note, doing this will not change anything about the world or your characters. When the cutscene is over, you'll be able you'll still be right here and you can keep playing if you want. Sure. Show me the final cutscene. Some folks say endings don't matter. But other folks, they like to know how things turn out. The consequences of their actions left. When the trains run again, Frisco thrives. People come from all over to seek their fortune. But thanks to you, they didn't have to do it while on fire because some cows attacked their wagons. I know I didn't get the perfect ending for this game. Hey, another playthrough for this series has enough support. And people ask, and enough people ask for it. Yeah, soon. We did it. With the railroad completed and Norton ousted, Schmee found himself out of a job, but in of an opportunity. After being elected mayor, he managed the growth and infrastructure of Frisco with compassion and pragmatism. In 1944, Frisco was named most reliable city by the Tuesday Evening Post. The idea of city life didn't appeal to Susie much. After you and she parted ways, she moved down the peninsula a ways and settled a, a cow's bane farm, still fighting the good fight in her way. Thanks to you, Gun Manor reopened and delighted tourists for centuries. The residual the residual positive psychic energy created by the ghost you helped leaked into the local water supply 
In the decades to come, the business that sprang up near the manor were characterized by their environmental friendly policies and charitable givens. Thanks to your assistance, Hobart burped got the photography bug. Or should I say photography owl? Anyways, he opened up an art gallery so the citizens of Frisco would never again have to suffer from the inability to see pictures of owl skeletons whenever they wanted. Kurtz left the frontier and set up shop in Frisco. His cult, uh, fitness group skyrocketed in popularity. The growth was entirely due to world of mount world of mouth because the first rule of Kurtz, Kurtz fit is that you cannot stop talking about Kurtz fit. <laughs> With your help, the professor gained enough knowledge about El Vibrato technology to start building his own. He opened his very successful consumer technology store in Frisco, and for decades people spent all their time staring all at little computers in their hand instead of talking to one another. <laughs> He solved all of Breadwood's problems. With the increase of morale and civic resources, they were able to clear the weeds from the roads and fix the well and the broken hitching post. There was even enough left over to give the mayor's office a new coat of paint. Refresh and refresh the facade of the, on the buttery biscuit and add a second story to the bunkhouse. I even managed to get that horse into rehab. Olive Garden and Cactus Bill lived happily ever after. They even had a few youngins. Chuck continued to run his blood and breakfast without incident, accident, scandal, or allegations for many years. You won four of the reenactment scenarios at Fort Memorial. They still talk about you. Remember when Limp, that Limp fella came around? Yeah, he was really, really good at this game. Dirtwater became, relatively speaking, a thriving metropolis. Thanks to your efforts as a commerce ambassador and all around helpful stranger, the one sleepy town became a shining oasis in the barren land. Every man, woman, and child in the town knew your name. They even put up a little plaque with your name in your old room in the jewel. As for you, after your adventure, you settled in Frisco and bought a very long, very narrow house. You filled it with souvenirs of your exploits and started an antique hat rack collection. When you left home, you told Rufus you wanted to help people. Over the course of your adventure, you helped 75 people. You weren't whistling Dixie when you declared your intentions. If you had been Catholic, they definitely would have sainted you, but you hadn't asked. But you wouldn't have asked because you wouldn't want any, to be in any trouble.
In 1906, all the remaining cows in the West were simultaneously activated by some kind of signal from hell. They thundered east, forming a gigantic, single-minded herd, led by the infernal sadist Duke Bovicus. The cows only thundered east toward dirt water. That's right, I never did really take care of the cows. Hey, other playthroughs. I can do it, I can fix that problem at the Bean Slinger or the Snake Oiler if we get enough support on the series. Fortunately, a gang of rodeo clowns swept in at the last minute and slaughtered the herd before it reached Dirtwater. Unfortunately, all the town's folk of Dirtwater had a hard time sleeping for pretty much the rest of their lives. Seriously, it was a grisly sag. Thanks to your cleverness, the world is not destroyed 420 years later on the country. It remains undestroyed for millennia. Future generations don't know they should thank you, but they definitely should. Thank you for playing. The end. And that, ladies and gents, is the story of Limp Sneaky McKay. I hope y'all enjoyed this here story. And I hope y'all be willing to support this story. And many other stories like it by telling other folk about it. If you enjoyed the West of Lothen. Yeah, Kingdom of Loathing. I knew there was another one. Well, folks, that's it. The end. This is the end of Limp McCain's story. So I hope you all support it all by uh, telling other folk about Limp McCain. The hero of the West, Limp McCain. And I hope you all enjoyed the West of Loathing. And I hope uh, to see you all in the next video. Bye bye.